Aboriginal people got their own way of finding out where you won't go and where they travel. You know there's some Jugong that don't go too far. And they know they will belong to that area. Because that's their stomping ground. Things about the dugong, where it's got to have feet with the zebra gators. people of the sea, saltwater people. Well, the rangers, we know the waterways and we know the country, but mainly we, we're the sea ranger, we concentrate on water. I'm a Yanua man, and I've worked for the Leon Tuweri out of sea rangers for maybe over 16 years. Well, I tell you, I've never seen anybody jumping on Juong before. <laughs> It's like we're doing a speed race. <laughs> it's a good opportunity for the young one. The scientists want to know how far dugong travel. Dugongs have a high conservation value globally, but in particular Australia has the largest population of dugongs remaining on the planet. The Gulf of Carpentaria, and in particular this sea country, is probably the most important area for dugongs in the Northern Territory. They're sensitive marine animals. The world we live in is changing. We have coastal development, we have climate change. We've got a really poor understanding of how dugongs use this area at the moment. So this data is incredibly valuable. For Yanua people, um, we have a really strong connection with dugongs. We respect it a lot because of the ceremonies we've got from all the people, stories and songs from that animal. To be here, working with the people who know these animals best, it's a pretty natural collaboration, I think. There's, there's many moving parts to catching a dugong. We've got Cody with us here and Maddie's in the chopper. You have a couple of key jumpers. Got a, a spotter, chopper, a catch boat, a processing boat, and we have a bigger support boat. First, you've got to spot the dugong, then we chase the dugong. One animal. Straight on your nose, 100 metres. Here we go. 10 o'clock, left hand down, 9 o'clock now, 50 metres. That's good, that's good. 10 metres on your nose, breaching. Oh! Oh shit, come here. Oh, come off. Too deep. Can you? You lost him? Yeah. Sometimes, you know, on a day you'll find 10 dugongs and you only catch two. The jumping is always a bit difficult. The animals are really strong. They're up to 400 kilograms an animal. People would probably describe it looking something like um, a walrus cross with a dolphin. It's in an order called Sirenia and a family called Jugongidae. It's the only member of that particular family, which makes it a really unique species. In terms of its scientific lineage, its, its closest relative is the elephant. They spend most of their time feeding on seagrass. They'll eat about 50 kilograms of that a day. We come here with Western science, but they have that knowledge that we don't have. We are scientists, they are rangers, they know dugongs. This fieldwork is about learning from each other. 
it's part of our um, culture, it's part of people's totem. It's also sung and danced in the highest ceremony. Well, I heard in the olden days, you know, before my time, uh, the ancestors lived on it. But they've been using jiwang and turtle as a, for, for a cultural reason. They go on that hunting for ceremony, you know, but they don't get it for themselves. When they bring it back, they share it around. Because that was the rule of the Solwara people. Mm. I have been busy, that's the mother of the young mm. people. And all people that appear learn us, I suppose, so we can carry on. Yeah. Caught the first one up here when they head up to Rawali. But in clear water like this, you can see where they go. Yeah, and there's no island out in the front. Of you. That's why everything's really clear. And you never know about catching them in dirty water. There might be sharks in dirty water. There's crocs, there's sharks, there's jellies. There's all sorts of things here. But we've got plenty of eyes on the water. down where they go. If they go into a reef and it's going to break off, and we're going to go out and pick it up and take it back. So the tags are designed to not stay on forever. We have a corrosive bolt and that should last no longer than six months. We also have a weak link that's built into the dugong tether. If a dugong gets trapped anywhere, it's just a matter of thrusting its tail and it's able to snap. Primarily, we're here to catch dugongs to improve our dugong population estimates for the Northern Territory. So when we do the aerial surveys, we look down into the water and we count the dugongs, but we can only see them when they're half a metre below the surface, something like that. So we don't know how long dugongs are spending at the bottom versus how long they spend at the surface. This project is getting that actual data, how long is a dugong spending at this particular depth, how often are they at the surface, what are their preferred habitat areas, so that we can make a better estimate. Yeah, we just got back, we got the first dugong, one down for the book today. Fairly big dugong. Hard, eh? There's like big jelly underneath his neck, yeah. Oh. And you just like, when you're feeling it, brother, you just like bobble. You know, like, <laughs> oh, you can't get a grip, you know, <laughs> yeah. They sort of communicate, the dugongs. They got a secret, oh, yeah, secret hidden talent somewhere. Dugong whistle, it's a way of communicating between them. Today uh, I was under the water and I could hear that whistle, which was something quite special. I think one of the rangers heard it as well. For us, as a ranger, yeah, we 
go out to the country, look what's if it's healthy or not, then we go back to town, tell the old people, give them a bit of feedback. <laughs> Oh, my grandmother, she's really proud of me because yeah, I'm just a young and I started last year. We say for that we're proud. They're good. They're working. And Jamala Yabirinje, like us three, Kano Yabirinje, Kanoro. Alonga, for them. We need to look after our own country. We need to bring in more rangers, more young ones so we can take them out to the island, get them on water, so they can, so they'll know where they, what country they belong to, and teach them where their ancestors and their grandparents belong to. Last day today. It's been a big week. Getting thrown around in the water by a 300 kilo animal is, is no small feat. The Lanthawiri Yarra Rangers, they're just like rock stars and they're, they're so much fun. There's really good humour there and they're a real pleasure to work with. The first group of rangers in the Northern Territory so ever to catch dugongs and this is the number 10 tag. So get your engines ready. Magnificent. Out on the water, caring for country, for Yanyawa people. We live with dugongs by the sea and we know that when there's dugong there, the country is healthy. Dugong is a dreaming story. We travel in the dream time. Look what I heard from the old people. It will be good to see how far all this next lot of Jugong travel from.